I'm just going to get that going and I'm going to share my screen so we can get uh, started. All right, so welcome to Exploring Strategic Partnerships for B2C Small Businesses. That's the name of the uh, webinar that Daniel and I put together, and you'll uh, get to meet Daniel shortly. Uh, the whole idea behind this is generate business through value add to your customers. And look, uh, the whole idea is sort of come together with uh, us uh, working together, and uh, you'll find out a little bit more about what I'm talking about. My name is Alexey Kolchov. I am based in Brisbane. I run a number of different businesses, and I also do a fair bit of business coaching and advising. Um, the four businesses that I run, well, the four that actually are working, uh, Your Easy Up Solution, that's a marketing agency that I started back in 2007. Uh, my wife and I run homestyle cleaning. I have a smoke alarms business and I also have got a fish pond cleaning business as well. Um, total, we sort of net over 3.5 mil uh, and I've got 11 staff in Australia and quite a few overseas as well. Um, I have uh, basically been doing uh, a fair bit of business stuff for quite some time. I started off as a marketing agency and I quickly realized there's, there's basically more to it. And um, over time, I started working with... Uh, with Daniel, and I guess uh, personally, yeah, I'm a father of three as well. And uh, sometimes I, I I wonder how I find a bloody time to do everything. And I'm quite passionate about soccer. So World Cup, if anyone's watching, uh, go Australia tonight. Um, I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I do a fair bit of hiking and travel. Um, as for Daniel, uh, Daniel and I have started working back in 2016 and he runs Secure Luck. So Daniel, mate, do you want to take over and uh, quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi guys. Um, thanks for jumping on this morning. So. As um, Alexia mentioned, um, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Secure Lux. Um, so um, in terms of work, you know, um, over the last sort of 12 years, while I've been heavily involved, we've moved from a $1 million turnover business to $7 million, grown the team from five to 30 staff. Um, I'm particularly obsessed with capturing data. And um, obviously there's a lot of opportunities that we probably all miss because we're busy every day running our businesses. So uh, I find that data is the best way to capture some of that so that you can reflect on it at a later time. So on the uh, right-hand side there, you've got um, a couple of examples from our um, custom-built software that we're building at the moment. Uh, the bottom one there is for the manufacturing side of our business. So that's actually a daily sort of productivity sheet per individual. So, um, you know, when it's below um, our sort of target line, we can sort of, we can look into, is that a performance thing? Is that something to do with, you know, how we're operating and everything like that? So, um, yeah, we're only, we're getting more and more excited because we're getting into more spaces in that section. Um, over the slide, I guess, over to the next slide, um, a little bit about myself. So um, I've got a toddler, just turned one, keeps me up still at night which is always fun and um so i'm a husband as well and my interest is i like all sports uh, particularly uh play golf and um massive afl fan and i also love country music awesome i guess uh, as for today's agenda um i wanted to touch on why strategic partnerships and i guess uh you know daniel and i have been playing around with this and uh, we've put together a bit, a bit of this uh, model for 2023 because look, let's be honest, uh, the market is changing. There's obviously a few external factors, but uh, we want to sort of run through what we found to be to be the case. And we also want to see uh, what sort of opportunities there, there may be. And in the end, uh, we'll do an FAQ section as well. I guess, uh, why strategic partnerships? I mean, for me as an agency, as a marketing agency owner, I found that quite a lot of businesses um, really jump into the marketing side of things without realizing that, uh, the best way to get business is referrals. And to do that, you basically need to partner with businesses that have the same sort of customer with you and are not in competition with you. So I find that leveraging of your existing uh, relationships really creates those referrals. And for me personally, uh, you know, that was quite an eye opener. However, when it comes to execution, that is always uh, not really an easy uh, win because a lot of businesses just don't know how to partner with other businesses and where to start. Um, generating referrals and sales is definitely one of the key outcomes of strategic partnerships, but it's obviously got to be done in such a way that it flows. Um, another thing I find is that uh, a lot of businesses don't recycle leads. What I mean by that is, look, if your conversion rate is, let's say, 50%, uh, there's still 50% of people that you never get through as customers, but those leads have come through to you for legit reasons. I mean, if you're doing locksmith work or CCTV or anything like that, those people are genuinely interested in that. And they, in the end, may end up going with somebody else or change their mind 
but the core of the inquiry is potentially security or the need for change. And if you are unable to capitalize on that lead, there could be an opportunity to focus on getting that lead across to a partner business as well. And this is where Daniel and I really started to uh, brainstorm the idea of uh, strategic partnerships. Another thing that's come up over the last few years is obviously sharing resources. I find that more and more businesses scream about not having enough staff and basically being overloaded with all sorts of things. And um, overall, uh, many businesses I work with uh, turned to subcontracting and basically started working with a lot of the potential competitors in that, in that sense to basically be able to deliver the work because at the moment, the market is still very, very hot. Um, business support wise, I find that uh, a lot of businesses play you know, that solo game where they just don't know enough about the accounting, the marketing, uh, I guess what, what else is out there. And, uh, overall, I guess uh, the whole thing is... Uh, uh, you know, it, it can be as simple or as complicated as you want. So um, in terms of opportunities, look, uh, there, there's a ton of things that could be done uh, for sure. Uh, I think overall, it's just about exploring those. And um, as an example, what I wanted to uh, share with you is, uh, you know, everyone's aware of this example, the builders. Um, every time there's a project uh, uh, for a builder, you'll find that um, People are obviously engaging multiple contractors to get the job done. However, it's only the builder who's being perceived. There's carpentry, there's electrical, there's all these different trades, and there's a ton more on the, on the back of this to get a job done. However, if a person, uh, if the customer was to engage them all by themselves, you know, why would they need a builder? Or would they be able to, to get the outcome that they're after? And essentially, this is what really started the whole idea behind this as well. Um, Daniel, is there anything you want to add on this uh, analogy? Yeah, I think real estate's uh also another good example just 100 having i think it's a a great customer service tool that you can have is you know actually being able to point someone in the right direction so yeah so yeah. it's almost like a hub that you use so you're basically engaging one person but in essence there is uh multiple trades that are on the back of that yeah so secure Lux, daniel um why don't you take over and uh, give us a bit of a rundown of uh secure Lux and uh what uh your company is all about yeah, thanks, Alexi. So um, you may not have heard of Secure Locks before, but um, you would have heard of CrimSafe. So CrimSafe is our, our um, you know, largest product that we offer to our customers, but we also do shutters and 3 and film. We have 42 years of industry experience um, and are a third generation run business. Maintaining quality from the good old days is, um, I guess, what we've sort of had as our mantra. So um, my dad's uh, started as an installer. So we've basically been able to sort of grow from a sole trading business to a company and utilize each other's strengths. Um, we complete all functions of our process. So sell it, measure, manufacture, install. Um, emphasis on customer service, which is one of the reasons why we thought we'd put this webinar together because I think um, collaborating with other businesses in the same sort of fields is a, a great customer service uh, point of difference that you may be able to uh, add to uh, your your business as well. Uh, we service Brisbane, Logan, Redlands, Gold Coast, Morton Bay, Ipswich, and our database at the moment sits at about 32,000 clients that we've had conversations with. So um, as, uh, as we go to the next slide, the reason I sort of mentioned that um, 32,000 is because uh, as Alexi alluded to earlier, um, there's plenty of opportunities to recycle those leads to other businesses as well. Um, but also, uh, you know, a lot of those leads as we've found over the last few years have sometimes, you know, bounced from us. Like they may have come to us with a need, but have, you know, gone to CCTV or to a locksmith first. And um, there's plenty of opportunities to go back to those customers in the future if we've got the right um, tools to get them back to security screens or pass them on to another, another profession. So um, this slide here, we've sort of done an example of what a traditional lead um, would look like. So a customer, if they wanted to get... Uh, I guess, source um, a few different trades from different uh, professions, they would have to go and do their own research um, online to capture those, um, to capture the information needed and then also to send through those inquiry forms. But um, just like us, customers are getting increasing, increasingly time poor. So 
I think there's going to be an increased desire for a one point of contact. So similar to what Amazon does now. Um, and, you know, we're, I guess part of this uh, webinar is we we believe that creating that one access point could lead to greater satisfaction in the buying process and uh, a greater likelihood of a purchase at some stage with the customer through your business, but also passing that on to other businesses as well. So the next slide's kind of a, a bit of a, uh, a mock-up of what we see as a collaborative lead model. So um, the customer accesses multiple services using one contact point. Businesses can then offer bundled packages featuring multiple services as well, which can also lead to a lower lead cost to your business, uh, reduction in your marketing and sales advertising. So uh, more, more profit, which is what we're all after and um, more inquiry and awareness of your product service at purchasing point from complementary product service offerings. Um, and I think yeah. uh, this is a uh, pretty important point where um, I guess everyone's paying for marketing. If you've uh, done Google ads, which I'm sure majority of you have done, uh, you'd be paying, you know, 50, 60, a hundred dollars per lead, uh, depending on obviously what service you're in. And uh a lot of the time, the leads uh, potentially don't uh, connect with your business uh, on, on, on various points. Uh, but, you know, obviously, if this lead came through another party, a little bit more qualified. And um, I guess, uh, you know, if, if the entering party could obtain all the key information about that specific lead, your life would be a lot easier as well. I think uh, that is really an, a, a great opportunity just there, the lowering of the lead cost. And for a lot of businesses, this is thousands of dollars every month. I thought I'd just plug that in, Daniel. Yeah, no, thank you. So... Yeah, so um, as uh, you know, we're we're across um, our Google spends quite regularly, and um, there's definitely periods of time where you're paying a lot for a lead. So we're always looking for ways to not lose um, our lead quantity, but get more from our our budget. So this was uh, something that Alexia and I have discussed uh, as a way that we can not only benefit ourselves but benefit others with uh, complementary product offerings. So. You can see here, this is a bit of a, a mock-up of our solutions hub that we're putting together on our website. So um, you can see a variety of different products and services there. And each of those will then go to a, uh, a pop-up screen to, to show you know more information and educate customers to then hopefully get the inquiry form on our website that we can pass through to um, your businesses. Yeah. And essentially, for those of you who are listening to this and unable to see the, the, the screen, uh, basically, you know, in terms of home security, uh, there is obviously CCTV, there is a, a crim, crim safe type environment, there is locksmith, there's fencing, there is uh, security gates, home automation. There's a ton of different services that piggybacks uh, off that initial inquiry. And a lot of the time, people make the inquiry about one thing where really they need a little bit of uh, guidance and potentially a sales process to get the right outcome. And um, on top of that, there's obviously all these trendy things as well, like the uh, doorbells and so on and so forth that can lead into other things as well. And one other thing I wanted to quickly mention as well, we've just gone through the whole Black Friday, Cyber Monday type of scenario, where I guess the number one thing that businesses have used is email marketing. So if you're sitting on the database of a couple of thousand people sending out an email with uh, something like this, where you're uh, introducing other solutions uh, could potentially be the low hanging fruit in terms of getting a quick win. And from a marketing perspective, I find that um, the whole thing uh, is really underrated. Like email marketing uh, for some reason just gets abandoned by a lot of people and people who do it, they for some reason just want to plug into the whole template scenario and sell you absolutely everything. But I think it's just about the timing and making sure that the theme behind the things uh, works really, really well. Yeah, I just thought I'd add that. Yeah, so yeah, if you jump to the next slide, uh, I guess as a example, you know, these are the partnering opportunities that I guess we see fit from a security solution point of view. Um, so partner alignment. So, you know, having, being able to get your sales team or if you're out doing quotes and stuff to have answers for if a customer sort of says they may need something else or um, to be done first. Um, so partner alignment, alignment's one opportunity. Lead activities. Uh, so rather than pay Mr. Google, each time from each different uh, profession, we can try and capture that in one and hopefully reduce all of our costs in doing so. 
Um, and, you know, the hope would be that this would lead to greater marketing opportunities and greater conversions and better job value. Uh, and the third opportunity is an expanded partnership opportunity, which is you know, offering bundles and stuff constantly so that we can, um, you know, provide customers with a solution then and there rather than have them go back and forward between businesses and, you know, put one off or, you know, decide that one has to be a, a greater priority than other because it's coming from two different uh, sources. So I guess in our business, if we're relating it to some of our examples that our sales team would see, um, quite often they might see security screens and CCTV as substitute products as opposed to complementary products. Um, they both are uh, in the same space in the home, like looking after security, but they, they complete completely different functions. Uh, we also quite often get, you know, requirements before they can go ahead with screens, which is, um, you know, where a, a joiner might be um, necessary or something like that. So the door needs repair, repair work um, to, before they can proceed. Okay. And uh, Daniel, we just got a couple of questions from Jake. I just thought I'd interrupt you before we sort of jump ahead. Jake, go ahead, mate. Yeah, sorry, mate. It's just um, I've done authorised reseller models, right, in the past with places like Optus and Telstra and places like that, okay, before COVID. Before COVID, I was in every state in Australia. Um, what I did was I trained their sales reps how to go out and be authorised resellers, which means more GP for companies like you guys, right? So how many sales reps do you have on the road? We have um, six sales reps on the road. Okay, great. So if would there be an opportunity where we taught you guys how to sell these solutions because to the end user and including the monitored line, the alarm system, whatever, um, and you guys go out and sell it and then you're an authorized reseller, which means you sign a contract, which is, you know, I've done it with quite large companies around Australia before, like I said, before COVID, it was huge. Um, but that's sort of, obviously as we know what happened with COVID. So that's, um, I'm back at, you know, um, you know, just looking after my corporates and, and large clients at the moment. Um, just a bit of background for you, Daniel. So predominantly 99% of my business is commercial. Uh, sorry, is, um, yeah, commercial, not um, residential. Um, so yeah, we look after like Domino's Pizza nationwide for all brand new sites and refit outs. We look after Star Hotel Group and Star Liquor and um, Star um, Warehouses. Um, they're just a couple that I look after. There are a lot, lot of other large ones. Um, but to look at a market like this, that's the only way I'd really see it fit um, would be like an authorised reseller model. Is that something you guys would look at entertaining? Yeah, I think it would be definitely worth a, a conversation, you know, um, at a later time. I'm sure um, I can grab some details and we can discuss further. Uh, yep. okay. as, um, as Alexi sort of mentioned at the start, I mean, it's all about shared resources, right? So our, our sales team would definitely be, you know, a form of a shared resource um, and they've got plenty of capacity to do certain, certain things. Um, so it just yep. comes down to, I guess, what the training is and how that would fit into our, our service um, and our, you know, consultation presentation. Yeah, I think it's yeah. worthwhile discussing this one-on-one uh, -on -one after the presentation. We, we basically wanted to introduce this concept about strategic partnerships. There's obviously many ways to skin a cat. And uh, I think in terms of capacities of what you're asking, uh, SecureLux is more than capable of uh, entertaining a lot of these opportunities for sure. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right. All right thank you. Good question. Yeah, so um, we also get a lot of after-service sort of questions and stuff as well so whether that's uh re-keying of, of timber doors to match the uh, security doors or um you know more, more often now it's coming up about upgrading to smart locks and and things like that so um right now a lot of that's you know i guess getting parked um we don't do anything with um we try and you know get we tell the customers to i guess go speak to their local locksmith but it would be a much better opportunity if we could direct them to a particular locksmith in that area that services um, that space. So I think by doing that, and you might you might wonder why you'd want to pass on 
details um, to, you know, for your customer to a different business for that service. It just helps you to remain engaged and enhances the service that you're giving your customer so that when it comes to a neighbor or a family member wanting um, your services, that they have no hesitation to recommend you and, you know, hopefully you reduce the number of customer, uh, n- number of companies going out to do quotes to compete against you. Um, yeah, so next slide. So why work with SecureLux? Uh, our biggest focus has always been a high quality, giving customers uh, an overall quality experience. So if you wanted to jump on to Google and look at our reviews, you'll see quite detailed reviews from our customers about our whole process start to finish. Increase opportunities for profitable engagements with customers. Um, maximize your rewards from your effort. Um, and we're invested in this opportunity. So we're, we're prepared to put time and people towards um, helping make the most of the relationships that we build from, from these conversations. Um, over the, just as a stat, over the uh, last couple of years, security screen demand is up 20% during this uh, time. And so there's, that means that we are seeing more and more customers year on year as well. So that's uh, more, more opportunities to, to utilize these collaborative relationships. Yeah, and I think on top of that, guys, uh, in terms of CreenSafe, you're one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in uh, Southeast Queensland. Is that right? Yes, yeah, we're, uh, we're now the biggest uh, in Southeast Queensland. So, yeah, that's, a, I think, something that's worthwhile uh, mentioning as well. So in terms of how the partnerships can work, um, we put together two options just as um, ideas, but we're more than uh, happy to discuss other ideas that you guys may have as well. Option one's uh, co-branding. So just utilizing each other's brands and databases to um, you know, create marketing material, whether that's for the website, um, email marketing campaigns like Alexi alluded to earlier, um, or having some collaborative offers. Uh, we've we've also done some landing pages, which I'll uh, I'll mention on the next page. But um, landing pages with those relationships as well. Um, there's also opportunities when it comes to whether it's um, for yourself or for your sales team to have some of these inquiries that bounce around between businesses to result in commissions. That's uh, you know obviously on a uh, case by case situation, um, but that's a conversation that we're happy to have as well uh, as secure locks. So the, yeah, so on the next page, we've got the uh, a landing page that we put together, which is just like a, a generic thing about security screens, but it mentions the, uh, you know, the real estate in this uh, example. And if the customer goes and inquires from this from an email marketing um, campaign that Bell has uh, sent out, then um, it instantly would come to SecureLux to handle, but it allows us to know who that leads come from so that we can either provide a commission or, you know, make sure that we, we say thank you for that. Um, the second option is, you know, probably a, uh, is I guess be joining, being part of our solutions hub that we're putting together. So basically have, uh, filling out the information in uh, one of those uh, spaces there. And when we get a inquiry through, it would go straight to you, just like we said in option one, um, it would come to us uh, from a inquiry form. So that's, uh, you know, some information about your business, uh, the products that you're offering and, uh, capturing that when a customer might come to our website for uh, say a crim save door, they might go to here and go, well, Hey, at the same time, while I'm, I might want to inquire about getting uh, a locksmith out beforehand or a CCTV. And you know, hopefully we can capture three or four leads from uh, one Google click. Well, I think overall, this is uh, a great opportunity in the sense that um a lot of inquiries when they're coming in, they're just not being nurtured properly. And you've obviously got the capacity and the resources already to do it. Uh, on top of that, obviously, as a reputable uh, local business for 42 years in the Brisbane area with advertising across radio, billboards, taxis, and all sorts of things, you've, you've done it all. I think uh, 
it's just really leveraging off the resources that you already have in order to create additional opportunities through that partnership. I mean, that's the way I see it. Is that how you see it, Daniel? Yeah, definitely. Um, you can, the marketing, you can definitely spend on brand awareness and um, that's something that we have done to get to the 32,000 that's in our database. Um, but we've definitely recognized over the last couple of years, we don't utilize that database enough. Uh, so yeah, this is, I guess, one of our approaches that we're looking to implement for 2023 when things might get a bit different in the marketplace. Mm. Yeah, 100%. So next steps, um, if you're interested in um, having a conversation, so whether that's a, a meeting or sending through an email with ideas or potentially something that you'd like to um, bounce by us to try, um, you know, we'll, we'll put our details at the, the bottom end of this webinar. Um, we'd, we'd follow up with a call just to find out a bit more about your business um, and what you're looking to achieve uh, from this partnership. If the fit's appropriate for all parties, we uh, identify whether it's an option one or two or poten potentially something that hasn't been discussed today would be most suitable. Um, and then we'd, once we implemented uh, an approach, we'd you know, continuously follow up just to make sure that we can fine tune to make sure that we're not missing out on opportunities uh, from not communicating with one another. So I guess uh, there's a few FAQs that sort of came through um, on the topic of strategic partnerships. And I thought I'd just uh, put them up on this slide and uh, run through them. And guys, if you got any other questions along the lines, feel free to ask away. Uh, first question that sort of popped up was why form strategic partnership rather than work on own brand? Well, um, there's obviously many ways to look at something like that, but I find that especially with uh, businesses that are just too busy, um, it's very difficult to grow through brand. And with the brand side of things, you really need to spend a serious, serious amount of dollars into making the whole brand advertising work as well. I mean, Daniel, from your end, what do you think about strategic partnerships and the importance of working on that as opposed to the actual brand for, for small businesses uh, locally? What's your take on it? Yes, well... Our guys, you know, we've we've got an affiliation with uh, the CrimSafe brand, which we've used as we've uh, grown. But we're now at the point where we've we've got um, a decent sized business where it is about focusing on our brand. But we we could help other businesses, I guess, um, in their spaces become more uh, familiar with customers by having you know having those conversations. Um, you know, with our customers and also with um, you guys. Yeah. Um, another question I had was, uh, have you seen this work in other industries? And look, the answer is yes, 100%. Real estates, builders, there's a ton of uh, industries that do this and they do it in a very uh, sort of seamless format. But uh, I think uh, this is an opportunity to make a little bit more active, obviously, if that works for you. But um, the whole idea can obviously be implemented in many different ways. And um, you'd be surprised that a lot of uh, industries uh, deliver this uh, without you realizing it. Insurance companies, for example, have their preferred uh, repair depots, for example, for, for the car insurance and so on. And I'm, I'm sure you get the idea from there. Um, in terms of eligibility criteria, so Daniel, what's the eligibility criteria for a strategic partnership with SecureLux? Um, any specific things that really stand out? Or is this something that you want to sort of discuss with each person individually? Oh, I think, you know, how they handle their customers is particularly important. There's nothing worse than referring a business that uh, leaves your customer with a sour taste um, from the referral because they've had a poor experience. So it's important to understand you know, the business's um, approach to the customers and how they handle, um, you know, their customer service and, you know, whether, you know, how important quality is in their product and their solutions. So that that would be the stuff we would definitely have a conversation about before we uh, jump straight into this. Yeah. Uh, with the marketing agency that I run, we find that working with business to have a proof of concept is really key for us. And I find that it's really about business knowing what they're doing. Because a lot of the time you have businesses that are starting out, but they've got no idea how to actually deal with the customers, how to provide customer service, and even how to sort of sell the service. They may be very good naturally at what they do, but all the other things are sort of lacking space. So we are about aligning with, with the right sort of business. I'm sure you're much the same, Daniel. Um, how do you work with multiple businesses in the same category? I think you've sort of touched on that in relation to having a preferred uh, provider in a specific area. Is that how you see it, Daniel, or is there another way to sort of look at this? So let's say number of locksmiths that want to work with you. 
Yeah, I think it would come down to the service areas. I know, uh, you know um, our service area is quite big in comparison to a lot of businesses, but um, also, uh, as I'm sure we've all experienced on the roads these days, things like, uh, you know, fuel is, is going through the roof, cost of living and everything, and that pressure is coming back onto businesses as well. So um, obviously, depending on how successful these partnerships are, if we can keep people close to the home and busier, um, I think that's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Well, my wife and I built a business uh, over the last four years, Homestyle Cleaning, and that uh, is focused on getting local cleaners to do cleaning for local customers. And obviously, it's a win-win for everybody because people don't have to travel very far. But at the same time, there's also more trust towards these people because they're in the local area. And if you're familiar with Google Business, if you do look for a particular service in an area, you will find local businesses popping up first. So I think there's a few synergies there because Obviously, if you are to be referred to a company, the first thing you're likely to do is Google them up and find out what sort of reviews they're getting. And if they're nearby, you'll definitely find that without a problem. So that's my take on the whole thing. Are you planning to expand outside of Brisbane area? Uh, Daniel, obviously, you, you you are very strong in Brisbane. What's your take on the Gold Coast, Sunny Coast and the rest of the country? Yeah, well, our biggest um, hurdle has been getting uh, capacity in our installations. So again, that's another... Uh, opportunity down the track with uh, partnering with businesses is we've got the right uh, people to train individuals in those spaces. Uh, however, um, you know, it's it's something that as, uh, you know, might be a perfect little um, add-on to a Sunshine Coast business or, you know, a regional business in the future and it's just having the right support and stuff. So that's that's uh, that's definitely on, on the cards for us. Yeah. Okay, uh, what sort of support will you be offering with uh, with this uh, partnership or co-branding uh, opportunity? That's a good question for you. Yeah, so I think it's um, it starts with that first uh, those first few conversations, and then um, you know we would do a lot with it when it comes to the landing pages and the marketing, and you know try and bounce ideas around the uh, the content. Um, obviously, our uh, there's opportunities with our email. Um, database as well to do some campaigns with these co-branding opportunities as well so that's a a, a decent reach in southeast queensland um, to get started and then uh, from there uh, there's plenty of opportunities to to do things like bundle and you know we can bring opportunities on that space uh, to businesses as well yeah, well, from my perspective, every business has got four distinct areas. Uh, it's basically marketing, sales, operations, and accounting. And I think you're probably able to sort of uh, provide some sort of support across the board. Operations, obviously, being the hardest one because every business runs things very, very differently. But I guess when it comes to marketing and sales, that sort of goes without a given. There's opportunities on the table that just need to be sort of qualified and, uh, I guess, converted or at least uh, sort of prepared for that uh, next step. But, uh, mate, I think that's uh, that's great. Well, I think we, we can't be specialists in all those areas and mm. run a business, right? It's just too hard. You're, you're just right. spreading yourself so thin. So if you can find people that can sort of help to alleviate the pressures in some of those spaces, um, I think that's uh, that's a real win. Yeah. And I guess moving forward from here, uh, here is a QR code. If you want to uh, tee up a one-to-one -one with Daniel, uh, scan along and uh, this will take you to his Calendly uh, profile where you can make a time and have a chat to him further about this. If something is outside, I guess, of these uh, two options that um, Daniel and I have identified, uh, I think it's worthwhile a conversation for sure. Uh, Daniel, anything else you want to add to, to this slide? No, just um, obviously more than happy to have a conversation and bounce ideas. Uh, you know, there's nothing to say that what we've uh, suggested is the perfect solution or, and it can't be improved. So more than happy to, uh, you know, have the conversation and expand from there. Yeah, no worries. Well, here are our uh, contact details. And if you've got any questions, probably the best time to have a chat is now. A uh, question I've got right now is, can you send a copy of this session? I'll pass on to the management. 100%, uh, that's why we're recording it. Uh, quite a few people could not uh, make it, unfortunately. And look, uh, we wanted to do this in the afternoon to make sure that we are speaking to the decision makers as well and people who are genuinely interested as well. I mean, time is money, and obviously we are investing our time and money into making this happen as well. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Happy to uh, open up the mics uh, if you guys want to do that. Yeah, good day, Alexi. It's uh, Derek Tidy here. Hi, Derek. Um, uh, Daniel and I have worked uh, previously together uh, when I was with Crimsage, so uh, I thought I'd drop in today and have a listen. So thanks for uh, what you presented today. It's really interesting uh, concept. 
Um, I worked for a small business here on the Gold Coast for a while and uh, Daniel and I sort of had a few chats about that sort of sharing uh, labour, especially the installation labour. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of merit in that. I think a lot of small businesses um, are too scared or, or uh, too worried about opening up their business and sharing with another. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the the labour market that we're in now, you sort of can't afford not to. Mm. So um, I think the idea and the concept is great and uh, and looking at other services that you could get into is um, really good. How would you go and how are you going to handle, I suppose, the variety of different um, crossovers, I suppose, and, uh, you know, sort of the basic training that you need for people if it's a secure lux. Uh, rep that's out there and it's another product that it, you've got a, a broad range of things like the idea is not to be a specialist in anything I heard you say that Daniel but um, there's got to be like a basic level of training so is that something that Secure Lux would do or is it on the onus of the business to come in and help train um, those people? Um, I think uh, I mean there's a couple of approaches that we can take with it right so obviously the more you're getting into the selling space for that business the greater the the training needs to be and the education needs to be um but you know in terms of i guess referring someone you can you can have like basic back sheets which we can create tools for and stuff like that with um you know key messages of those products um you know if if the uh the business has quite a variety of products and solutions it's probably best to focus on those entry point ones from a conversation and then sort of allude to the fact that just like we're out here having the consultation today um it would make sense to you know to have them come out which i can pass on your details and they can give you a call for so um yeah i think it's uh it, i think it will only grow as um you you get to know those businesses uh better but i think there's a couple of stepping you know stepping stones along the way that we can implement i think it can be as natural or as systematic as you want i mean if you're uh sending out one of the secure lux staff to basically uh you know do a measuring quote oftentimes they'll find that there is another problem for example let's say uh the place has got uh no deadbolts on 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 the, on the on the doors and windows, or potentially there is a pretty old uh, lock uh, on the door that potentially may need some attention. And just popping the question creates an opportunity for a conversation. Uh, alternatively, you could probably do a whole questionnaire at the end of each job uh, and basically allude to a number of factors that could be covered through this potential opportunity. There's many ways to address the whole thing, and 100%. I think uh, uh, training has to be sufficient in line with those processes, but that's something that you guys would need to discuss with Daniel for, first, I think. Hey, guys, um, just a quick one. So you keep measuring, mentioning the residential market. That's fine, but are you guys also commonly in front of the commercial market because if i said to you guys with the authorized reseller model i was talking about earlier where your sales reps could simply say for a coffee a day fully installed five-year warranty parts and labor maintained we can install a security system for you and have it looked after by sec tech group for instance and you guys would make quite a serious gp out of that is that something that you're in front of or is it only sort of the the consumer market oh we, we definitely do do commercial. Our our business is probably more residential than commercial in terms of a, okay. you know, a waiting. Yep. Um, but, you know, in terms of uh, installs that we've done in the past, you know, schools are quite a common one. Um, you know, you definitely get your commercial inquiries and we'll see them through as best we can. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of like, that would be the best way for you guys to capitalise out of what I do because we do it on a finance model, right? So it's a coffee a day fully installed for like an eight camera package and alarm system. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And the business owner, it's hundred percent tax deduction to them and it's affordable for them. So there's no upfront cost. Yeah. Okay. That's why I've been able to do, you know, um, thousands of clients nationwide. Yep. That makes yeah. sense. No worries. Thank you. Sounds Thank good. You. Any other questions? All right. Well, um, I think we've covered a lot of things, guys. And look, uh, thanks very much for finding the time out of your busy day to jump on this uh, webinar. The whole idea was really just to uh, connect with you and uh, explain to you, I guess, our ideas behind the scenes. This uh, may not be anything new, but for some reason, I'm not seeing a lot of businesses actively doing something like this. And look, uh, we're approaching 2023. God knows what's happening. Uh, by the look of it, we're entering some sort of a economic uh, downturn. Uh, we obviously can see that buyer's confidence is, um, uh, you know, dropping uh, through the fact that the interest rates are rising and the cost of living is going up. I think it's about playing smarter as opposed to to, to working harder. And uh, for me, it's just all about understanding 
you know, who was uh, basically wanting to do things different. And if we were able to sort of work uh, together uh, through adventures like this, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a win-win for everybody. Anyway, uh, thanks very much. Uh, we'll get this recording uh, uploaded and uh, I'll send out a link to uh, everybody who's registered for the uh, event. If you want to share this with anybody else, please, uh, yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Daniel. I thought that was uh, really good. Thanks, guys. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. See you all later. Bye. Bye.